Good evening and welcome to another Mothman podcast. Good evening, Daryl. Good evening, Daryl. Hey, guys. Tonight we're going to be discussing our investigation from this past weekend where we spent Saturday night in a, a home that uh, appeared to have quite a few little entities running around in it. And oh, we're yeah. going to try to recap what we uh, what we done there. Um, when we first got there, Amanda, you uh, you kind of went in, and uh, uh, we were told that the uh, the bedroom of the residence is uh, the most active and yeah. the um, uh, the hottest, I guess you would call it, where for the most activity. Yeah, and uh, there was a lot of um, negative activity that we found in that room. So. Uh, when you first walked in, <laughs> excuse me. When you first walked in, what happened? Well, I um, I got there and I was uh, talking to Susie for a few minutes, and I literally um, I had felt the presence of her mother in the living room, and it's it was a really positive presence. And um, I literally was sitting there thinking, you know, we're not going to find anything tonight. There's just a positive, comfortable presence here in the house, and I don't feel anything else, and. Then you guys got there, and um, I volunteered to go to Susie's room first, and I opened the door, and I swear it was like a blast of just dark, heavy energy, um, and it I started to walk out again, and I thought, no, I said I was going to do this, I'm going to go in, and I'm going to sit down with the little recorder and just see what happens, and I sat down on the bed, and... Um, it was dark, and I had closed the door, and I could hear people settling down outside, and um, I think when Bruce was listening to my um, the playback of the recorder, I was, I was saying, like, nothing negative or nothing evil can harm me here, and so I was sitting there talking to myself for a second, and then I settled down and just listened, and it... It freaked me out. I was only in there for three minutes. Um, I heard there was some, like, plastic rustling. And this is a room, anybody who's been in this room can tell you, there's the air does not move in that room. It's hot in there. There's no air condition. There's no fan. There's nothing. It's just very still air. Yeah, it's very stagnant. Yeah, that's a good word. It's like stagnant. It's it's got its whole at- own atmosphere. In that it room. does, and it's different from the living room. It and the bedroom is right off of the living room, and so I heard like plastic rustling and that from, kind of from the closet, right? I don't know where it was coming from, but it freaked me out. And I was like, I was kind of looking around, and I was like, I'm okay, I'm okay. Then I heard. Um, something metal scraping across the wood floor i didn't see anything move but it was pitch black in there um and then i just kind of felt like something was behind me and i was just sitting on the bed going i could lay down and then nothing will be behind me and then i thought i don't want to lay down on this bed no i'm not laying down on this bed (laughs) and that was about right at three minutes i was like i can't do this i just can't so i ran out so she came out of the room, and uh, by that time, Bruce and I had uh, taken out some of the equipment, and we started putting our equipment together. Um, I went into the room next um, and took a motion detector, little light ball that we carry with us, that um, if something touches it, it goes like red, blue, green, all kind of lights go off on it. So I kind of set it at the head of the bed, and then I took the SLS camera in and started videoing with the SLS camera. I sat down on the bed, and as soon as I sat down on the bed, just a few minutes later, the uh, motion detector went off to the at the head of the bed. Um, <coughs> and then um, uh, I ran the SLS camera, and sure enough, I was pointing at the um, um, the closet door. And apparently the closet is the portal, I guess, as you want to call it, for yeah. all the, the paranormal it's activity. The hot bed. <laughs> the hot bed. And sure enough, uh, an entity, f- a couple of entities – form yeah. there in the um, uh, closet uh, area um, and so you know I videoed that and, and um, uh, for a few minutes and then I walked outside and said uh, Bruce you need to take a look at this so <laughs> Bruce took a look Your at turn. it and then um, I think Bruce you went in next right? yeah I actually just kind of passed the torch and then I went in and uh, this time I had moved that vibration ball uh, that lights up uh, onto uh 
uh, it was like a pile of clothes on the dresser mm-hmm. on the far wall where nothing could, you know, accidentally <laughs> shake it or touch it. No vibrations. Yeah, no vibration right. at all. And uh, as, right as I was walking in, it went off. <laughs> so, I mean, like it, it was within seconds of walking in that room. It was like they said, it was like a completely different atmosphere compared yeah. to the rest of the house. And then um, while I was sitting in there alone with the SLS camera, I had at one point, I had three entities on mapped in on the SLS I remember camera that. at one time. I had two tall ones and a short one that was just a little bit taller than the kerosene heater that was on yeah. the floor. And uh, I was trying to get them to like respond, like raise arms and stuff like that. But uh, other than them just kind of mapping in, and I mean, we did get later on with the spirit box. We had, we you know, we got responses that way. But mm-hmm. I could like it was real hard to like. We had some EVPs, but they were really, really quiet and hard to hear on the camera. And I mean, it, but it was cool to have three, you know, have three entities at one time yeah, on the SLS. right there. Well, during that, uh, during our investigation, um, there sometimes I was in the bedroom uh, looking at an entity, and you were out in the living room area, yeah. and entities were forming in the living room area, and they would form in the hallway that's coming from the living room area. Between the two bedrooms. Going yeah. um, into um, um, Susan's bedroom, but they would also form and walk, you could see them walking into Susan's daughter's bedroom. Yes. Right. Now that that bedroom was off limits to us, so we couldn't really go and investigate that bedroom. But we mm-hmm. we did have quite a few pictures of entities right there in the doorway, and going into the doorway. Yeah, because we because we accidentally mapped in one when we were just sweeping the hallway. Like her door was cracked open a little bit, and there was something standing behind the door, like yeah. right next to her bed. I don't know if you remember or not, but when I was standing there doing one entity. Uh, I actually seen it turn and walk out of the doorway, and I said, yeah. "Bruce, it's coming your way." <laughs> yeah. I remember that. Well, and well, the, when I had the three on camera, remember the the two tall ones floated up through the ceiling, and that's when like my the SLS camera kind of glitched. Is like when they went, they floated through the ceiling, and it glitched. And then after I came out, and then you, I, I think you went into the hallway to shoot the two, you know, in between the two rooms, right. and you were getting two entities. I was just, I was just. What prepping the uh, the new SLS camera, and I had caught the entity that was crawling on the ceiling inside the kitchen. Remember, mm-hmm. um, we had an investigator with us uh, at one of our investigations. He says, "I don't like things that go on the ceiling." Oh yeah, yeah. I think I think that was Remember? Dan that said that. Yeah. It, was either, it was either Dan or Jason. It might have been Jason. I think it was Jason. Yeah. But uh, he says, "I don't like things that go on the ceiling." <laughs> yeah. He's like that's he's like I've, as many horror movies I've seen that's never a good thing. <laughs> so he, we yeah we do have one that wanted to hang around the ceiling and uh, he he kind of did a little jiggle right there. Well, he, he floated like on the ceiling. He he almost looked like he was backwards crawling on it, and then it kind of looked like he was free floating a little bit in oh midair. My God. But he stayed on the camera for like a good forty five oh, seconds yeah. to a minute, right? And then like he glitched out, and I, I, then I took the camera into the kitchen. And then he was standing on the counter for a little while, and then he disappeared. But I remember, but uh, I think later on, like mm-hmm. uh, I, I was using the old SLS camera, and then he, I caught the figure standing in front of the fridge later on that evening. Right. Yeah. And and um, I was when I would take the uh, the SLS into the living room area. There was always a corner, the right hand corner. Remember that? It's over there with yeah, the, to the uh, left of the TV. Right. It, that was a hot spot because they would always want to sit there. And one of them looked like there was a table right in front of the TV. Right. And it, was it was so cool. funny. It was like sitting on it. Like, yeah, it, it, it was either trying to sit on it or sitting on it. Because it looked like it was trying to sit on it and cross its legs. <laughs> like, that's what it looked like. And, uh, like you caught that one tall figure in front of the that hutch cabinet. Oh, yeah. He was a we were, tall we one, on, too. Like, and that was break. one that, um, um, Susie's daughter had mentioned that she saw, and I think Susie's friend also saw a tall, very tall shadow figure right in the house. Yeah, the well, head hunched down because it was too tall. Yeah, that was that was what they had said that it had to duck its head to go in the doors. Well, this one would have been that tall. Oh yeah, that thing oh, was wow. easy seven feet. And where was I during all this? I stayed away from that bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> they tried to get me to go back. I did not go back in there. She wouldn't, she wouldn't come in with us. I can uh, feel it way too strong. But you also see on well, the... Well, you, uh, you went back in when we all three went, went in. Yeah, when time, you guys but, were and the lights uh, were on. <laughs> yeah. 
that was the key. The lights were on. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you'll see. Um, now, I did uh, show in the video, um, I put the camera on Bruce so it, it mapped Bruce out so I could show you how it actually maps out an individual when it sees it. Mm-hmm. So you can see that it was mapping out Bruce. And then when I turn it and put it in the corner where there was no Bruce's standing there, right. then it started mapping out the entity, yeah. which was none of us could fit uh, yeah. see visually and yeah. it was taller than i was too and yeah. i'm Quite i'm learning taller. about the equipment and what i thought was interesting was one time you you show you were just kind of pointing it at the corner down toward the floor kind of and there were just it was just kind of dots all over the place there was no entity yeah, the laser grid. yeah. and then you moved it and it mapped out a, a human figure and i was like oh how does it know <laughs> yeah well, that's that's kind of how the camera works. Yeah, it, it, it works off of energy, and it tries to see energy. And when it sees a human, it will ma- it it maps would, of yeah. human form. What it is, it's an Xbox 360 Kinect camera that's been modified. It shoots out a laser grid, and anytime it breaks the beams, it sends the the input back to the sensor. Uh-huh. So that's how it can map and tell. Like if there's, if there's so whatever's breaking the beam, it's got a, yeah, it's got enough density to break uh-huh. the laser beam in order for it to map in. Wow! And you'll also see that again in our night vision camera that I'm uh-huh. running in the bedroom while Bruce is running the SLS camera. Yeah, you you can actually see on the night vision camera the grid yeah, itself yeah. you'll oh, see the grid see all cool. the dots on the wall and stuff so okay um, that's what you're seeing you know when you see that uh, all the dots and everything uh-huh. on the wall it's just a, a massive grid that it's shooting out yeah, so th- this was amanda's first investigation with us so yeah so we we had to throw her in the deep end like right away <laughs> well <laughs> she's pretty interesting she's getting ready for our next one because yeah. we've got another yeah. one coming up i'm looking but, uh, forward to it but this one was uh probably one of the um I guess the hottest spots we've been into when it comes to a very uh, haunted house like all day and all night it was just going i mean even when we <coughs> did the podcast during the day like for the interview with her that week right. before we did the uh investigation i got touched during the during the podcast i had a uh, yeah, I ghost mean, try to enter me yeah so i mean we were having experiences before From we even did the, the investigation get-go. And then, uh, like I said, like even when we were on break, we were accidentally catching footage and EVPs. Like mm-hmm. when you left the audio in the, in that bedroom and left it running, <laughs> I think we were all taking a break. And it was like, I don't know, we were in the living room for like 15 minutes or so, just yeah. kind of relaxing for a minute. And he, he was just letting the audio run. And then you caught footsteps. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I put one of our very sensitive Zoom mics into, uh, it's an H6, which is a very... Um, it's an expensive mic, and I guess you get what you pay for, but it's very sensitive, okay? Um, and I just left it running and left the room. <coughs> You're going to hear the video of me. You can hear me bring it and set it down and, and then walk out of the room. About nine minutes and 13 seconds into the um, <coughs> recording, you're going to hear footsteps, very plain footsteps, and it sounds like somebody's jiggling the door handles. Yeah, uh, I don't know if it's the closet. It, it, or it sounded like uh, something turned the handle and let it go. Let it go, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was very, um, um, very plain. Yeah. So. And you'll have to excuse all the coughing. I think everybody got sick. Yeah, we're sick all getting from, sick. <laughs> <laughs> except me. <coughs> oh, no. But, uh. I'll yeah. help you out. <coughs> no, don't do that. But, uh. <laughs> But yeah, we were getting evidence of not even trying. So it, it was kind of, that was the same way it was when we did Sherry's house in Old Salisbury Road. Like, I mean, it seemed like as soon as we set up a camera, we were, you know, it started recording that right. things were happening. And it, right. I mean, that that's a gold mine for us. I mean, most paranormal investigators, you know, they go into a place and they, they go hours without seeing anything. But we've been to two locations consecutively that have just been like a hotbed of stuff happening like throughout the day and night. Well, one of the things that we found is um, (coughs) one of the things that we found is by interviewing and going to individuals who have a story and have something there uh, prior to us arriving, it's, it's a little bit better investigation than just going to someone that, um, that has no story or just showing up at a, a, a house that's supposed to be haunted or, it's been haunted in the past, and it might show up today, and might not show up another right. for another three years or something like that. So, <clears throat> we've been very fortunate in that we've had these homes that um, um, that that are very active. 
Yeah. So. And those are the kinds of investigations we want. So all those listening, remember, if you want an investigation, email us at mothmanpodcast at gmail.com, and we'll definitely look into it for you. But here again, if – if we don't find anything, that's what you're going to get. And that's <laughs> might be that um, that's what you want is us not to find anything. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, be sure to, to, to contact us and, and let us know um, what you have and let us uh, interview you and, and determine whether it uh, uh, needs an investigation or not. But I think, uh, Amanda, you're going to probably go back in there at some point and help cleanse this house. Is that correct? Yeah, that's the plan. Um, <clears throat> and also to speak with uh, Susie's daughter a little bit, who's struggling with the paranormal issues that are happening in the house and surrounding her. And so I think, um, yeah, we definitely want to go back and cleanse and see what we can do to help out. Um, uh, do, so I do have a story that Susie told me that um, is about her daughter. And we want to keep her anonymous because she's yeah, already that's why I was, that's struggling why I, enough. That's why it got quiet because I, I was going to say, are we allowed to disclose what was disclosed to us? Yeah. Well, we have a written permission. So. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, and I'm going to keep it we're really We're just being general. technical here for the yeah. listeners. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we were just trying to make sure we weren't overstepping our bounds. We don't right. want to we, we don't step clients. Right. And we don't want to do that to you, yeah. the listener, or anybody else. But uh, as long as we have the rights to give the story, we, we'll right. get the story out. Yeah. And um, I'm not going to use uh, the, the person's name or anything. But I just want to say that I have investigated this and verified it. There is, um, there's news coverage of the story and... Um, obituaries and everything so it's been verified and you'll have to just be happy with that because i'm not going to use the names to protect the people's identities um but there was uh basically um an argument and in Susie's home and her uh daughter and um her daughter's boyfriend decided to to move away for a little while and they moved to a home with other young people, as you know, a lot of young people do, and they rented a bedroom in a house with other kids their age, and um, th- we're talking young 20s, so um, it didn't really work out, so they moved back home, and that was fine. Susie welcomed him back, and everything was fine. Well, they decided, um, this was literally just two months ago, they decided to go up and visit some friends uh, at their house that they had moved out of and um they found that a new guy had moved into their old bedroom and this guy said um to the daughter uh, basically he said you left some really bad energy here it's really dark and i don't like this paranormal stuff around me things are moving i'm scared and i just want you to take your ghost and go home and so of course she felt very unwelcome and she left well uh it was uh, about a week later, that young man disappeared. And he was missing for 10 days when um, they found him dead. Uh, he had driven in a single car accident off of an embankment next to a bridge over the Yadkin River um, and crashed his car in head on into a tree. And so it was a fatal accident where he had been missing for 10 days. So that was kind of... Um, that was a rough, rough time for uh, Susie's daughter, of course, because um, I think she felt some some responsibility. Responsibility, exactly for for the negative negativity that uh, this young man had said was hers. So um, that's one of the things that um, I know me and her cousin would like to help her with, just to understand that it wasn't her responsibility and she's not at fault for this. Right, um, but. Could some negative energy have followed her and somehow tormented this young man and and eventually caused his death? We don't know. And and see, that actually kind of verified Susie's story when she was talking about the entity had formed a bond and attached to her and was following her from residence to residence. So if it was following Susie, obviously it would follow her daughter as well. Well, Susie said there has been some... uh, some activity at her work also. Oh yeah. She, she did it, say yeah. it had followed her to work, work before too. Yeah. 
So th- there is a lot of negativity in that house, and I think that um, uh, I think Amanda, you're going to try to um, go over and and work with them. Yeah, about trying to. And I uh, I think um, as you guys may have noticed, Susie's definitely sensitive. Yeah. Um, and I think her daughter is too. And I think because of that, um, it isn't there. It, they haven't asked for the paranormal, but the paranormal. Um, what I, what I've heard is that when you're a sensitive or an empath or a medium and you're not aware of it, you're already seen in the, in the spirit world as as shiny. So it's almost like it's a dark room and, and someone's got a light on. So of course you're drawn to it. So the paranormal would be drawn to them. And I think, I think Susie's absolutely right that something has attached itself to her. Well, it's like I said, that the bedroom was the um, the key to to most of the activity there at that house. Yeah, um, oh yeah, I think that the closet in, in particular. And, oh yeah, and Bruce and you I used the it. voice box um, to try to communicate with some of the entities in the in the room. Um, and at one point, Bruce asked, um, "Is the closet a portal?" And, and I got a yes. You got a you got a yes. Um, and he also asked a lot of other questions. You want to? Explain oh yeah, that? Uh, during the spirit box session, I. I asked uh, uh, for the name, I mean, common questions like that. And when I asked for the name the first time, a woman's voice came through and we heard Beth. And then um, I forgot what else we asked we, right after that. But we asked the age. And I th- uh, at first, Daryl thought it said seven. But when I reviewed the audio, I heard six, that she said she was six years old. And I'm guessing that that's the short entity <laughs> that we were mapping in. Yeah, that, like, there was it looked like almost a child there. Yeah, and uh, see, and then we started getting a man's vo- uh, voice coming through as well, and it sounded like the two of them were talking. And during the uh, in the night vision camera, you can hear like an EVP exchange between the man's voice and the woman's voice, but you could you could clearly identify that woman and man's voice over and over through the spirit box. It was the same voices; it wasn't anything different. And then I, the man's voice told us to wait. And then I we also heard, like, a help us. I mean, but mm-hmm. we weren't getting answers to every question we asked. Mm-hmm. So No, but it said wait a couple of times because um, <clears throat> at one point I told um, Bruce, I said, I need to take a break. Yeah. And, um, and it said wait. Yeah. It, actually, the woman's voice went wait, and then the man's voice went wait. Right, at, right after it, like so, we don't know what he, we were supposed to wait for. We yeah. did wait for a few minutes, but nothing happened. So yeah, we um we took the break and came back. But um, and I, see, I tried to shoot some <laughs> SLS footage while we were doing the spirit box, but somehow, like when spirits manifest, they tend to draw energy from our cameras and stuff. Right, and it actually uh, drained the battery out, out of the SLS camera, and it caused the footage to like corrupt and corrode because it stopped the recording yeah but you can uh, see i i videoed you while, yeah, while this was going on to show you or show the the audience that uh we were doing the yeah. sls camera so if for the and, audience uh, that was wondering why there's no sls footage accompanying that shot and like and why it's staying in the night vision during that portion of the video that's why because when the, the spirit started manifesting because at first it was just two and then the, when the third one popped up the battery just went like, yeah. Yeah, and it, it just uh, sucked everything out. We had yeah. to charge our equipment a couple of times because of the fact that um, uh, it was draining our equipment um, pretty heavily there at mm-hmm. one point. Yeah, the, uh, the old SLS camera glitched four times because of, of spirit activity. The full spectrum went down right away, like in the first 15 minutes that we were starting to use it because I took like four snapshots and mm-hmm. right as I, I started to record video. It just drained a brand new battery completely, so we couldn't use the the, the full spectrum camera, and that kind of sucked. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, <laughs> but it's happened before. Yeah, you know, it happened on our last investigation. We kind of comes with the territory. Yeah, uh, but we did get some good stuff. So oh, uh, I think mm-hmm. the audience are going to really like uh, looking at our YouTube uh, yeah. video that will come out uh, Saturday. Yes, um, Saturday. What is this? The date of Saturday now? Oh, the, I think it's going to be the fourteenth. Fourteenth, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, tomorrow's Friday. It'll come the out 13th. Saturday fourteenth. Uh, you'll be hearing this one on the thirteenth. Uh, I'll be <laughs> playing, playing this one on Friday night, so that you'll be aware that uh, 
the It'll thing. be a full moon and yeah. Friday the 13th. <laughs> Look out for Jason yeah. Voorhees. <laughs> Listen yeah. to some ghosts. Hey, the 13th is my lucky number. Mm. <laughs> so... Uh, well, it won't be lucky for me because I'll be, I'll be putting the finishing touches on the video so you guys can watch it Saturday morning. So, you know um, what else I felt, though? I I keep feeling that um, Susie described things like a, a dish flying off the counter and some uh, glasses that broke and things that got turned over in the living room. And <clears throat> I really think that there's some um, poltergeist activity like there's psychic well, activity coming off of the daughter. She, the covers get pulled off of her too, and, and while she's I sleeping. think that's the ghost and, and, and see, or like, whatever he is. Remember when I put the mel meter on the bed and it spiked to like a yeah. four point three? Right. And then in that corner where you caught the the ghost in the living room by that hutch, when I took the mel meter over there and put it like into the cold spot where the ghost was, like I I got like a ten point two on the mel meter. I mean, huge. Spike. You want to explain to the radio audience what a mel meter? Oh, is? the mel the mel meter is like an EMF detector. It's Detects like electromagnetic uh, waves, and anything above a point three is pretty significant. Like, because you know, you can walk up to you can put it up near an electrical outlet and get like a point five, but mm-hmm. I mean, anything for it to be anything over one is significant, and that's especially usually, in an open area of a house. Yeah. So, you're seeing like an elect huge electrical spike. Oh, absolutely. Like, I mean, I've like I think the highest I've ever seen a millimeter go is like a twelve or a fourteen, and that was in Sherry's house. But that's because we had we had like seven entities on camera at one time on the SLS. Mm. Wow. Yeah, that was. Um, and and for anybody listening, you need to go back and I look at our old Salisbury Road investigation to see what he's talking about there. Yes, yeah. absolutely. So, again, we're getting ready to. Um, to do another one on the September the 21st, we'll be in another home. Uh, we already have a picture of the entity. Yeah, that the, oh, it's uh, fantastic. Yeah, it's a, it's a great it. picture. Um, so we're going to be Very convincing. Uh, we're going to be there and working on that investigation. We hope you like this investigation, and if you like us, be sure to let us know on YouTube and uh, any other. Um, platform platform that's like here we're on everything now yeah, so. we're on Spreaker, spotify uh, Castbox, google podcast uh coming there soundcloud <laughs> instagram and twitter instagram and twitter. coming to our heart radio soon so and our um, website <laughs> mothman podcast at gmail uh, well email at address, gmail.com mothman podcast.com but yeah email us too and see one thing that makes this next episode so cool is it's an interview with the, with the person like and we actually get to hear their story so we want more uh, more of we, that. we want more viewer like you know submissions for uh if you've got a story experience. we have the ability to uh, either come to your location or we can do it over the phone you'll you won't be able to tell that we're we're not interviewing you in person with our equipment that we have now so uh, just call us and, and talk to us about it and we'll uh we'll be sure to put you on the air yeah and you don't so, have to use your real name i mean we if you want it to be confident we can obviously oh know, yeah admit, we're not admit your name for safety reasons we look we look after you as a as a caller and uh, we look after you as uh, an individual because we know how there's some people that believe everything and there's some people that believe nothing and then there's those in between and uh, you'll see in this next next investigation we had a non-believer who actually saw something and became a believer so uh you know it only I takes would. one time <laughs> yeah i would uh, <laughs> for you to change your mind and so um um and, and we do have some some things that uh, my son-in-law always says. It always happens off camera. Well, yes, we can't have the camera rolling twenty four seven around us all the time. So things do happen Why not? off. <laughs> yeah. But it's and, always worse when it's the best thing. To yeah, you can, yeah. <laughs> and then it happens and, off camera, and, and then they drain our batteries, and, and we're sitting there going, "What the heck?" Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know, things happen, and um, a lot of times it's hard to hear these. Um, these voices, they're very low and they're very faint. You, you know, we have to use very sensitive earphones to, to pull it up. We try to amplify it the best we can to, for you, the audience. Um, but I guarantee you, we don't add anything and we don't take anything away. No, we just give authentic. you exactly what it is. So, if we, um, yeah, if we don't get, if we don't find nothing, you don't hear, you nothing. don't hear nothing. So we hope you like tonight's podcast. Um, look forward to our video coming up. Um, this coming Saturday, the 14th. And um, until then, 
Have a good night. And from Daryl, the boss man. Good night from Amanda. And good night from Bruce. Thank you.